Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show it's about dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode 3 of The English. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, let's start off with everything in Wyoming. Um, obviously, we had the whole situation of we catch up with Billy Myers, and obviously there's his buddy, uh, was it Timothy Flynn? And we had that opening where he shot his wife and then killed himself. And you're like, what the hell is that about? Because we know that's the guy, obviously, from the uh, recap at the beginning. Like, um, they got revenge for uh, Billy's brother, Lonnie, getting killed. They got revenge on him by killing the guy in the first episode. But part of me wonders, was that the right guy? Maybe it was. I mean, that's probably all what... I was about to say no, because I was wondering if that has to correlate with all the kills on River. Was it kills on the River? Um, was it Kills on Water? I think it was it was Kills on Water. Um, I believe if I'm not mistaken. And I was like, whatever this is, this has this goes further back, you know. Uh, hence why all that stuff happened because Billy was acting weird when he went to go see the sheriff. He was like, yeah. So were there any bite marks? I was like, that's very specific. To ask about like, wait, are you implying that's why Timothy did what he did? Like, in retrospect, they do find the teeth marks on the body later on. I was like. Because I was thinking, like, that's why I'm wondering, the guy they killed at the beginning, did they, th did they think they got the right person when in actuality kills on water is the actual person they're looking for? So that's what makes me wonder, could that be what that is? Because I would assume they were kind of implying, like, the guy that killed Lonnie, that's who they thought they were killing at the beginning, but maybe it's actually this guy kills on water is actually him. Or maybe, maybe, maybe there's no direct correlation, or maybe there is a connection, but maybe it's not what I'm thinking, that he's the actual person they're looking at. That Once again, the teeth mark and everything, it, it's probably more like this. They got the right person, but the problem is, this is a guy that him, t that Billy, Timothy, and Eli know. They've like probably heard whispers of this guy, and he's kind of probably a legend amongst like hunters and stuff like that. So it's like people know about him, and his signature is leaving bite marks. That's kind of his thing, right? Uh, I don't know if that's kind of like almost like a, a branding thing of like like biting the flesh of his, like kind of his way of marking his territory and like marking them in the afterlife or something. I, I can see that being a thing of like, oh, you're forever have my brain, my teeth. Like, so you're always remembered for who and what you are in the next life or something like that. Could be what that is. Probably over, I'm probably overthinking it, but that's probably why Billy was like, why would Timothy like go throughout? Why he kill his wife and then kill himself? But then now you correlate it. It's like maybe because he knew this guy was on the hunt. It's like, did he have the teeth mark? Then later on, sadly, Billy's son finds him. He was pretty much dis he was wrapped up in barbed wire, disemboweled. Uh, and hung up on the, by the wire, and his son saw the guy in the distance, but we didn't see him, but I can only see him that kills on water, um, that was just him, especially correlating with everything, after, like, well, Eli, it's like, right, he's targeting everyone from this particular unit, because, what was it, like, he's trying to find out about what happened at Chalk River, so, that was some interesting stuff, and especially how that ties into, because I said, his name is Thomas Trayford, I kept, I said Hayford, um, Hafford, or like last episode, but it's like, uh, Trafford, or Trayford, um, but basically, Billy's wife was trying to get the cattle, because the cattle got out, because when, um, Timothy killed his wife, she was like, hung over the fence, and I guess it was lowered enough that it made it possible for the cattle to get out, maybe, either way, uh, Thomas and his people ended up grabbing up those cattle, and it's like, uh, it's like, oh, like, you know, the, whatever cattle's free without branding, but she's like, no, that slice branding is ours, but it's like, it seems like they did it on purpose, because he made the whole point of like, yeah, you're uh, Timothy, and um, you saw what happened to him, he killed his wife and then himself, it's like, you know, you better be careful, the real danger, like, you're, I'm not threatening you, the real danger is sleeping beside you in your bed, because I guess kind of being like, yeah, after their military service, all of them were a little off, but it's, I guess because all of them knew they were being hunted by this guy, because part of me wonders, is that, what that, is that why Timothy did what he did, because he was trying to escape this guy's wrath, you know, maybe it's a thing of, Baby, I'm gonna kill you because it's the it's better than you you go out this way rather than you suffering and killing himself because he was so scared about what was coming. Maybe that's what it was, and maybe Billy uh, just kind of got caught off guard. That's why because he wasn't sure if it was you know the same person or like if it's like oh we being hunted down. Well, sadly he found out the hard way uh, uh, when it all happened. But uh, 
Because it sounds like they were like, oh, we're going to basically take Billy, any cattle that was Billy's, we made sure to take it. So it's like, why they specifically had beef with, um, it seems like Timothy and Billy, like, why that was a whole thing? Like, why you, why, like, almost like, oh, they, even saying like, oh, they don't deserve any. It's like, maybe, like, maybe some of that Chalk River stuff has them doing some foul stuff that kind of lingers some stink that they have on them from that whole situation or, or something for, like, uh, Trayford to be like, oh, like, I would, I, those people don't deserve cattle or something. I'm like, like, they did something so deplorable that they don't deserve to kind of have any life they might be building for themselves. Almost what that implied, it seemed like it at very least. So, that was interesting. Um, then we have everything where I was actually, cause I almost thought like all this stuff in Wyoming, I was like, oh, is that going to be the main focus of the episode? Uh, and it turned out it wasn't. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Like I said, I, but I, I was under impression being like, I wonder if that's supposed to be the full episode, but it's like, no, cause I'm about to say like, oh, is she, uh, is, uh, Cornelia not going to be in this part of the episode or even Eli, but it's like, no, they're both in this. Cornelia meets with this dude who is talking about kind of like, yeah, the, the, I forgot what they call cowpox. I was about to say, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be like the early equivalency of mad cow disease or is that something like, cause I, Obviously, I know that's something that was a big thing like years back, but I don't know if this is supposed to be like an earlier version of that or whether it's it sounds like it could be considering it's basically yeah, a disease tick bites a cattle. Obviously, it spreads and like a whole bunch of livestock are infected. You eat that livestock or whatever you get infected. And he's talking about like how crazy it is that something 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 like that could happen from a creature that's the size of your like my pinky thumb, uh, thumbnail, you know, I mean, your pinky nail, sorry, uh, and then he went on, he's just talking about, like, oh, yeah, uh, because at first he mentioned Darwin, and I guess he was almost kind of going, almost going down the, um, uh, is Dar, because I know Darwin did natural selection, that was kind of, I think, the route he was kind of going down conversation. And then he made a comparison to the whole tick and cow situation because he's talking about, hey, I want to, like, basically remove a disease from something, like, uh, strip away the disease, kind of, like, cure, like kill the disease and then put it back in there so that once the body is a, it's like, oh, the body will be like, oh, this is what happens to this foreign body that enters us. So now like anytime it happens, we gobble, it gobbles it up and makes it, it kills it immediately. Like the body now is ready and defending itself. And then he proceeded to make the comparison to like, oh, like how uh, society should handle Indians. And Cornelia was like, wait, what? He was like, yeah. She's like, what? So he's like, yeah, it's how they, sh how society should handle. And she's like, kill them. He's like, no, absorb them. It's like the only way an Indian's gonna make it nowadays is if they're a white person. So he's basically implying like, oh, like basically erase all that makes you you and basically become white. It's like basically the only way to survive going forward is being white. So they need to basically kind of um wipe out all of their spe them. I was about to say wipe themselves out by hey. Have a whole bunch of uh, children with white women. I was like, but by that, at least that's what it sounded like he was implying. Like that's the only way. It's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta kill that Native American in you. We gotta get rid of that completely. Like getting, you know, so that all that remains is whiteness. And just Cornelia was just almost like a Jesus because he acts like such a smart person. But it's like, yeah, we've seen. I mean, there's almost a little bit of a parallel where it's like, oh, smart people can have dog shit takes too, you know, and have like takes where you're just like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's such an intelligent person. Because he makes, but then once again, he compares like this. Ma he made he compared cowpox to Indian, you know, in the Native American. So it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh, uh huh. I see how that is. I see how it is. Uh, and it's almost kind of like, yeah. Just I love that out of nowhere he stands up immediately gets killed. And I love how Cornelia try to play like dead, but the guy's like. I didn't shoot you, so I know you're playing dead. But he's like, yeah, this guy got what he deserved because he's somewhere he shouldn't be. And even she asked later on, like, where am I not supposed to be? Because And the guy didn't really give her an answer. And he's like, yeah, you don't don't call for anyone to come get the body. He's like, because by the time they show up, the vultures will have picked it clean. So she does go by these, like, um, higher elevated, like, platforms that kind of, like, on some large, like, wood stilts. And we see one was just nothing but bones, so I'm guessing like they leave those bodies out there, the bodies of the enemies, to potentially be eaten by uh, the vultures or stuff. But it's interesting how that correlates later, because he that guy in particular he took off with the um, 
that guy and the wagon, and I guess in that guy's wagon, and uh, put him in the back and then took off with him. And I do love how that correlates to everything with Eli's side of things, because Eli's hanging around um, John and Katie, and he's just trying to figure out, like, how the hell are you making money? He's like, you're talking about all the buffaloes, his eyes, I, as far as I can see, and basically, you could basically, like, go from, like, tailbone to tailbone, I guess, almost like never having to touch the ground because there were just that many. But it's like, oh, like, oh, that corn's from, like, uh, last year, and it's surplus. He's like, are you going to let it rot? It's like, for him, it's like, because Eli was just like, how are you making money? Because there was a whole conversation last episode. It's like, oh, did you? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. We, he's like, you shouldn't be able to plant stuff here. He's like, don't worry about it. We hit, like, a vein of water or whatever. And you're like, okay. And I love that he made this whole comment about, like, oh, you're Pawnee. I, he's like, I heard that the Pawnee, uh, their women are ones that did the, uh, the handled, like, the housework and, like, the cooking and stuff, while the men did the horse lifting and stuff. And I love the whole thing of, uh, oh, your horse looks good, and I'm trying to remember what it was. He made some comment about basically how John makes his money, and John was like, don't presume to know my situation, and then uh, Eli was like, don't tell me who I'm supposed to be. He's like, no, I would I would never do that, and it's just like, oh, here, smash these uh, pieces, uh, these uh, bones, you know, and uh, kind of do what you will with them, but then we also see he's making a deal with uh, some other people, people who are trying to step in for a uh, God, what was it Captain Clegg? His his whole thing, like him, Charlie, and that other dude, their whole bushwhacking thing. It's like, yeah, like uh, trying to get these other guys to fill that void. And I thought he was trying to get Eli on his side, but I guess he had someone else in mind. And it's like Eli was going to be the price to get them on his side or something. I don't know. Because it's like, oh, yeah, like one of the other people you could deal with is like, because uh, only other person in this territory is black eye mog she is a lady that her and her sons uh ended up encountering uh cornelia from afar but like she was like no nah, you go ahead and you want to stick your wicks in something warm go right ahead but she's like my snatch is looking for something a little bigger i was like wow i uh wasn't expecting that phrasing that was interesting but basically it's like yeah this isn't going after her and all that she has might give us 500 550 at best it's eh, i'm looking for a bigger catch so i think uh, obviously they're making a point of introducing her and bringing her up in that same conversation it's like so we haven't seen the last of black eyed uh mog and her uh, her kin you know so we'll, we'll see what kind of ends up happening there uh, but basically, I'll say, like, yeah, she was never going to work with you, John, especially so she's never going to work with someone who's, um, it's like you or your kind she'd never work with, so. Uh, but Eli ended up, when he ended up talking to um, Katie Moore, he found out about what they are. He calls them hucksters. Basically, they're uh, they're scammers. Like, hey, you come here, we basically give you what you want. Because people here, once they reach this side of things, they're willing to give you whatever whatever they can just to make it a little bit further. And it's like, right, you're opportunists. Like, that's how they make their money. They're not like, oh, like reaping it in, like because they're able to plant stuff here. It's like, no. The fact is, they basically take stuff from people and they give it to other people and sell it. They kind of determine the price for passage or how, because people are willing to do whatever it takes to get a little bit further. I mean, I guess the argument is like, we'll kind of look at Eli and um, Cornelia's situation. Because Eli ended up finding, because uh, obviously it's like, oh, you'll need that German wagon. He was like, yeah, it's not mine. He's like, well, since it's not yours either, then I'll, uh, I'll get ready to sell it. He went and found Cornelia's bag of money because she left it behind. But also he found the pouch that the compass he had given her came from. And I was like, wait, I was like, is that supposed to be Cornelia's compass? It's like, then why didn't she say anything? Because it's not. It belonged to the German family. And so it's like, that's where you kind of find out what they, the whole thing, especially later on when uh, Eli's scraping up those bones and he finds human remains. I was like, ah, so that's how John, because John was going to get rid of the body because he was like, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, cut that price a little, uh, I'm going to have to mess with the price a little bit, because there's a body back there, and they're like, uh, he's like, not unless you want to deal with it, I was like, because I thought like, oh, did he already do it, but later on, Cornelia finds the body, and she immediately recognizes what body it is, because she was there when home dude got killed early in the episode, but it's like, yeah, that had to be like, previous people's bodies he got rid of, so it's like, cool, 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 so you kind of see what time, uh, Katie and John are on, so... 
And um, ultimately, uh, Cornelia ends up running into the German family and finding out. Because she knew, like, something was up. Because obviously, like, they're they're not well-versed in English. So they, they know a little bit of English, but it's kind of a little broken English. And they were saying, like, oh, yeah, they tell us when they found him. And she's like, um, she was almost like, wait, you mean, no, 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 when they heard from them, and he was like, no, when they found him, I was like, wait, what? Because right then was the first inconsistency, because you're like, they made it sound like, right, if they heard anything, the people passed by, but the German family's like, no, they said they would look for them, so you're like, interesting, so that's, I was like, that's fascinating, so, and also love Cornelia trying to explain the whole thing, the word I couldn't think of last episode that I was trying to think of, uh, it was, a. Uh, Boomers, that's what it was. I had to look it up really quickly because I should have done that last episode because I was like, I knew it was a word that I was familiar with, obviously, but I'm like, I, I could not for the life of me. I was like, what was the word? It was a, it was such a, but anyway, boomers were like the word and she's basically trying to explain it to this German family. Like, right, you are trying to take land that's not really yours and they couldn't, obviously there's a language barrier, but she's trying to explain, she takes the hat to kind of use some physical men, uh, representation of like, right, you're stealing something. But for them, it's from a religious standpoint. It's like, no, 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 it's not their land. It's no one's land but God's. If God didn't want us to have it, he wouldn't have put us in a situation where we'd be here. And I'm like, ah, oh, like there's no convincing them because they don't realize how wrong it, because they're like, no, like if it wasn't meant to be, it wouldn't have happened. It's like, yeah, but so they look at it as like, God led us here. This is God, this is all God's land and he deemed for us to have it. It's just kind of like, yeah, but so they're kind of like not too caught up. They're not too concerned about the whole aspect of like, yeah, but a whole bunch of people were murdered and their land was taken from them. This isn't your land. So people like us came here and took it from them. And now we're basically giving it to you when it should be returned to them. So it's like, yeah, but like there was, and she kind of realized too, like there was no convincing them otherwise. Plus there was a whole conversation too. It's like, oh yeah, this is carrots for the horse. She's like, oh yeah, the horse. Is. She's like, no, our horse. And you're like, wait, what? It's like the horse that had like one like leg that I guess looked like it had a sock on it. She's like, yeah, that was our horse. And I was like, they took the, oh my God. And so she took off, she got, got a saddle, rode one of the horses back, hard as hell to get back. And just as Eli stumbled across everything, it's kind of when he was like, basically was like, hey man, I'm not here to like do whatever you got to do to get by. And for him, it was his way to kind of get back at them. It's like, right, they took our land and he's like, this is my way of kind of basically sticking it to the man a little bit is doing this. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of doing it, except I'm mainly doing it to white folk. And so it's like, Eli's like, yeah, that's kind of not me. And he's like, Really? All that you did in the army for him, John was almost like, don't look down on me, considering all the shit you did while you were in the employment of the army. Like, don't look down on me, you judgmental prick type of thing. I think you kind of get that feeling vibe from it. But it's like, oh, I'm not going to hurt you because someone wants you. And I was like, who the hell wants Eli? Obviously, uh, kills on water, obviously, later on. But I'm like, at first, I was like, I, who would want him? And he's like, oh, I'm not going to hurt you. I, uh, I need the, uh, I uh, need the uh, need the cargo to stay intact. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And then his w uh, wife has like uh, the uh, trunks to knock out Eli. I was like, yeah, I love how they brought that forward because like we saw that last episode and to kind of bring that back. It's like, yep, he got knocked out and sold. And by the time uh, she got back here, she uh, by the time Cornelia finally got back looking for Eli, she meets Katie and Cage like spinning his story. Oh yeah, that money. He oh like that much money and it was hidden. Must have been stolen. She's like, it's mine. He's like, well, it's stolen now because Katie's like, yeah, he took out he took off with that money, you know, and trying to paint Eli in a certain picture. But like Cornelia couldn't tell whether or not to really believe it or not. But there was also a part of her day. And she's like, see, put the gun down. Like this ain't you. Like uh, killing a thieving. That ain't you. You just don't have it in you. And she kind of lets go of the gun. I was like, oh boy, oh boy. And then she ends up trying to like uh, hit or, uh, hit Cornelia with the barrel. Cornelia dodges out the way, knife her in the side. And I love my favorite line. Ah, hell. I got shivved by a cracker. I don't know why I love that line so much. And I was like, yeah. Uh, because I think it was, it's still once again, that thing of, once he said, he's like, you will have a moment to strike because people are going to look at your face. In Katie's case, it's like, oh, yeah, you, you dumb idiot. I got you now. It's like, right. She was so certain she had Cornelia, like, 
pegged, but it's like, no, Cornelia was ready, stabbed you. I thought she was dead, but I guess the way Cornelia puts it later on, it's like, no, she's not dead. She sure as hell up there bleeding it. But I love when she was waiting for John, and I love that. She's like, where is Eli? And it's like, I don't, and he, she was like, all right. So it's like, what, um, do you not think you're worth this much or something like that? Well, didn't, what did you say? Didn't you say him when we first got here that he was not more, he looked like a backwards Pawnee? It's like, oh, you must be up, you must be selling yourself short. It's like all this knocking on this box and being like, is that all there is in there? Is that all you have? And he creaks on the floor and she's like, oh, I see. He's like, okay, that's it. And she's like, no, I think you are up. She's like selling yourself short. And I love that she was like, <laughs> she's laughing a little bit. She's like, I was in this situation before, and you know what my reward was? I landed, I was not flat on my face. But the guy in particular, he got a, uh, sta uh, um, a knife like straight through the heart, through the chest, you know, referencing everything with Richard in episode one. And so for her, it's like, once again, she's like, and now I'm going to ask you again. Is this every, I'm going to ask you what I asked before. Is this everything? Where, because, and I, I, it was actually a really sweet line. It was basically like, I'm going to ask you for everything you have again, because it's going to be, because my friend is going to be worth that much to get back. And I was like, that's really sweet. And, you know, saying it because they are friends. And so she's like, once again, where is he? I was like, dude, Cornelia's badass moment. And then we get the ending where Eli is meeting with kill on, kills on water. And who's like, yeah. What happened, once again, I think Chalk River. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see what ends up happening on that front. I wonder, is because of that, is Eli the only one left? I should have taken more notice of the picture, the one that they made sure to show you at the beginning, where it's like, oh, Billy Myers and then Timothy Flynn. So, I mean, I don't know if Eli would have been in that picture. Maybe he is, and I, but like I said, I, I would assume just because of who he is that he wouldn't have been in that picture. Uh, just because, like, well, for one, I don't know if he'd be all about it, but also it's just like, I don't know if they'd be all about it, you know, you know, like color of the skin and everything, so. Some very, very, very interesting developments. I'm very excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.